This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Foreign automakers are losing the EV race in China. Last month, Chinese brands accounted for 73% of sales for new energy vehicles of passenger cars. That's up 9 percentage points from a year ago. BYD, Cherry, and GAC led the way. Tesla only accounted for 1.2% of the new energy vehicle segment, down from 2.2% last year. Foreign automakers like Volkswagen and General Motors, which are still the largest automakers in China by sales volume, are minor players in the NEV segment. While they have a full lineup of EVs on the way, it's clear that domestic Chinese automakers have grabbed the first mover advantage, and they have no intention of giving up their lead. And it looks like China just took the lead in the robo-taxi race too. Baidu became the first company in China to offer fully autonomous taxi rides with no safety driver. People in Chongqing and Wuhan can use the service which is called Apollo Go. Rides cost $2.37 plus another $0.41 per kilometer. In the U.S., Waymo and Cruise also offer robo-taxi rides, but only in two cities, Phoenix and San Francisco. Baidu, which is an internet services company, claims it has the most patents globally for autonomous technology. Earlier in the year when the U.S. Postal Service announced plans to update its fleet of vehicles, it only planned for 10% to be electric. That unleashed a ton of criticism, so the USPS increased that number to 40%. But that means a good portion of its fleet will still be gas-guzzling delivery vehicles that only get 8.6 miles to the gallon. The post office said it would need $3.3 billion more to go fully electric. Well, it just got the money. As part of the big climate bill that just passed in the Senate, the USPS gets $3 billion to electrify its fleet. At Schaeffler. We pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Say, what is it with minivans in China? They have some of the most expressive styling in the world. This is the 009 from a company called Zeker which is a premium electric brand from Chinese automaker Geely. Its massive shiny grill jumps out at you right away. Zeker calls it the fountain of light, thanks to 154 strips of LEDs. The 009 is built on Geely's sustainable experience architecture and features three rows of seating with room for six people. That's the same platform Zeker's other model, the 001, is built on, as well as Lotus's new SUV, the Elettra, and the upcoming Polestar 5, which will be the production version of the Precept concept. The 009 is said to have a 700-kilometer or 434-mile range, but that's based on the outdated NEDC test cycle, so real range will be less. It's predicted to reach those figures with a 100-kilowatt-hour battery pack and a 272-horsepower electric motor that drives the rear wheels. The van will go on sale in China before the year is out. Speaking of EVs in China, the SEIC GM Wuling joint venture announced it sold its one millionth electric vehicle in China since it first introduced its first EV in 2017. That's a slow ramp up for sure, but a lot of that came in the last two years thanks to the success of Wuling's cheap little mini EV, and the numbers will only continue to grow. As we reported previously, 
Wu Ling started producing the joint venture's first model outside of China, the right-hand steer air EV in Indonesia. Not only does that provide it an export hub, but a way to avoid geopolitical issues should they arise. The JV also revealed that they will expand their NEV lineups to include hybrids and plug-in hybrids. Which car brands have the lowest operating costs and which ones have the highest? Well, you're going to be shocked by a consumer report study that ranks brands by how much they cost to maintain and repair per year after five and 10 years of ownership. Stunningly, Cadillac is the least expensive brand to maintain, only costing owners $225 per year on average after the vehicle is 10 years old. The average owner spends $208 annually on repairs on a vehicle that is five years old and $406 a year after 10 years. So Cadillac is way below that. Then comes Buick, Toyota, Chrysler, and Mazda. And at the other end of the spectrum, BMW is the most expensive brand, costing $911 a year on average once the vehicle is a decade old. European luxury brands dominate the most expensive list, including Audi, Mercedes, Volvo, and Mini. Consumer Reports says parts and labor are far more expensive with the European automakers. With global reach across three continents, Tejin Automotive Technologies make vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Here's a good way to tick off your customers. General Motors is forcing buyers to pay $1,500 for an OnStar plan that's listed on the window sticker as optional. The three-year plan is standard, but owners will be charged even if they don't activate OnStar. Since the beginning of June, Buick and GMC buyers have been forced to pay for the package. Cadillac started doing it in July, and Chevy will soon disclose its plans. GM claims by making OnStar standard, it will enhance the ownership experience. But not surprisingly, customers aren't happy with this, and even dealers are upset because they have to go along with it. Mercedes is opening up the order books for the EQS SUV in Europe, so now we know what the big electric SUV will cost. In Germany, it starts over 110,500 euros, including taxes, which is about $113,000. The top of the line EQS 584 Matic starts at roughly 135,300 euros or about $138,500. The EQS SUV is built at Mercedes plant in the US and the first examples will reach customers in December. And hey, we've got a great Autoline After Hours coming up on Thursday. Sandy Monroe will be back on the show and we'll get his insights on everything from what he sees going on in the auto industry today to how he turned into a YouTube star. So join John and Gary for what promises to be a lively, unscripted, and brutally honest discussion. But that's the end of today's show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.